We have really focused our efforts on providing housing and vacations for middle America. And we established ourselves in the secondary and tertiary markets before it was the it place to be, if you will. And we really, you know, pursued opportunistic buys on the multifamily side. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Our, our guest today went from $100 million in assets under management to over $3.5 billion in five years. And we're going to learn how he did that. So many details. Kip Soden, he's the chairman and CEO of Reef Holdings Incorporated. He has over 34 years of experience in commercial real estate with a strong background in real estate brokerage, mortgage banking, acquisitions, development, and asset management. He has been uh, active in sales for more than 12 million square feet of commercial real estate and over 36,000 apartment units throughout the United States. Kip has built an amazing team and has grown very fast in the last few years. Uh, it's been incredible. I think he said he had like 15 employees five years ago uh, and now has many hundreds. Uh, I mean, they have grown very fast or vertically integrated. Uh, uh, he is in uh, different types of properties uh, as well. He's going to talk about that and, and how they have grown. Uh, it encourages me to think about you know what, we, what can be done in five years, but just even having a, a vision for that as well. I hope that squashes some limiting beliefs for you as a listener. It does for me. And uh, you're going to learn a lot from Kip today. Kip, I am excited to have you on the show. There's, I tell you, we've done almost 1,400 interviews in the last three years, and there's not too many too many operators we've had on who have, you know, the scale that you do. And and I just, I want to give the listeners just a little, you know, what's the word? Like, I want to draw them in a little bit here. I mean, you, you, you all invest over what, 1.34 billion. Is that what you said last year? Or maybe I had that in assets just purchased last year. I know you're going to clarify that in a moment, but it's an impressive, you know, background that you all have and just the scale that you you have at your company, over 36,000 apartment units and 12 million square feet of commercial real estate. It's quite impressive. Uh, Kip, give the listeners though, a little more clarity there on just your scale, your business, how you all have done this uh, to some extent, and where we're going to dive in. Uh, Whitney, thank you. And it's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate you having us on your program. Let me start by uh, correcting a couple of things. Please. <laughs> One, yes, we have uh, seen just incredible growth over the last five years. And we did close, had our largest, biggest year uh, was 2021 amongst our five different platforms, which I'll uh, talk to you about. We closed a total of 1.34 billion in transactions. And as a company, we are currently around 3.5 billion in AUM assets under management amongst our five main platforms. Those five platforms are our multifamily platform that's acquiring existing multifamily assets and secondary and tertiary markets throughout the South in southeastern part of the United States, and it is our largest of the five. Then we have a robust beachfront hospitality and resort platform, which is acquiring over his uh, hospitality assets in iconic locations on beaches. Uh, currently in that division, we own two uh, properties on Panama City Beach, one on Pensacola Beach. We're building a high rise on Pensacola Beach now. Uh, we bought a property on Cocoa Beach. We bought the Sea Palms Resort on St. Simon Island and just in the last 90 days closed two additional hotels, one on Surfside, South Carolina, and another in uh, Hutchinson Island, Florida. And uh, we currently have two more hotels on the contract in that division on Amelia Island. So very, very, very busy. Ground Up Development is a third division or platform Uh, within the reef companies, and it too is very, very active today. We have seven apartment projects under construction, primarily Texas and Tennessee, and we have two large resort hospitality projects, one on Galveston Island uh, and another on Myrtle Beach that we will be uh, starting this year. Then we have Reef Communities. Reef Communities is set up to buy large tracts of land in high growth areas that are in big demand for residential housing. And when I say large, I mean very large. Our first 
takedown was 3,300 acres just south of Dallas in Midlothian, where we designed, you know, hiking, biking trails, 8,500 single family blocks, uh, probably 3,000 multifamily units, another 2,000 BTR build to rent, uh, town centers, schools, police, fire, you know, complete cities. We've got another 3,000 acres in that same division under contract just outside of Austin to do a very similar project that we expect to close at the end of this month, March 28th, I believe, is that close. And then our fifth uh, vertical or uh, division is our extended stay hospitality, where we're building Roundup extended stay hospitality all over the country with uh, ESA, Extended Stay America, in Wood Springs, which is a choice brand. Recently completed one in Missoula, Montana. We've got three that were breaking ground in Salt Lake City, one in Athens, Georgia, one in Smyrna, Tennessee, one in Kerrville, one in Gallatin, Tennessee. So very, very active. Today, we're about 400 employees. When you look back five years ago, we were 15 and had a hundred million in AUM, and today we're over 3.5 billion. So really, really growing. Well, I just I want to dive into that a little bit. I mean, a hundred million to five billion in five years. I mean, that's so impressive. And it's uh, you know most people dream of getting to a hundred million. I was just at a conference of about a thousand people this past weekend, real estate conference, and and most are I mean just dreaming about you know twenty million, uh, much less you know have even the vision for you know five billion in five years. And uh, so uh, so three, you know, three and a half billion is where we are today. Three and, three and a half, half billion. Right. Okay. Across so three, the, Across the five platforms. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. E- either way. <laughs> yeah, it, it e- either way. Right. That's so impressive. So, you know, would you just speak to maybe when did that vision happen for you? Or, you know, or like early on, let's, you know, if we went back five years, did you, did you foresee like, we're going to have these five divisions and we're going to be able to pursue, you know, or have 3.5 billion in assets. What did that look like then? And maybe we could talk through a few of the things that help make that a reality. We have really focused our efforts on providing housing and vacations for middle America. And we established ourselves in the secondary and tertiary markets before it was the it place to be, if you will. And we really, you know, pursued opportunistic buys on the multifamily side. And, you know, typically we would come in and and buy an asset, call it a a C plus or a B asset, and then renovate it, move it up to, you know, a C plus to a B or a B plus, a B to a B plus or an A and so on. And over time, you know, when we started developing a reputation of always uh, transacting and transacting uh, more quickly than some other of our competition would, we were seeing more and more deals and it just it fed upon itself. We have a very uh, loyal uh, retail investor following, probably 1,600 investors in, in total, many of whom have, have invested in you know, deal after deal after deal okay, have, have invested in, in, in multiple deals. And it's just kind of continued to grow. Friends tell their friends. And it's, 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 it's been a great evolution for us. Yeah, no doubt about it. Same thing with the beachfront hospitality platform in that we're really catering to middle America, you know, the majority of the population. We're not trying to be the Ritz Carlton, uh, but we're providing this, you know, beautiful beach water experience for average American. You know, speak to some of the steps that were taken uh, early on to be able to, you know, be experts in five different divisions like that, right? I mean, I, I think about that and bringing expertise on our team, like I can't be the expert in probably five different asset classes, I mean, but how have you done that? What does that look like, you know, and even early on to scale, you know, like you have? Fair enough. So, you know, having been in this business for 35 plus years, we have learned quite a bit and have transacted in about every kind of asset class you can imagine and made a lot of mistakes along the way. But I think what we do best is we don't make the same mistakes twice. And we try to move in a direction in real estate that is more recession resilient. I don't believe there's anything that's recession proof, 
But I do think there are certain areas of commercial real estate that you can protect your downside. And I think over the years, we've learned to do that. And it's really not five different classes of real estate. I think that you've got to understand the uh, common denominator is really focusing on value add, hospitality, and living for the majority of the population. And our markets that we concentrate, we're in, I think, 15 states today, but they're all the South, Southeast state. Common denominator on, on where we transact is that it's where the majority of the population is moving. We're seeing great, great migration from the West Coast, Northeast to Texas, the Sun Belt, and uh, the Southeast. Business friendly climates, lower cost of living, and it's really worked very well for us. So we, we do focus on what we think we know well and <laughs> continue to expand upon that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, speak to how your, maybe your team started to grow. You say you had what, 12 or 15 people, you know, five years ago and, and, you know, now, you know, hundreds and, uh, you know, what were maybe some of those hires there that were crucial to scale as well, like you have? Fair enough. So we are a completely vertically integrated company. So we control all aspects of a real estate transaction. And, you know, I think that that helps us Uh, better analyze and do due diligence. And, you know, if if something does not work out the way we want it to work out, there's nobody to blame but us. So we have a robust acquisitions group and they are charged with finding, you know, product in the markets in which we transact directly. We really don't buy anything that's listed for sale. If it's listed for sale and listed in the multifamily space with a CBRE or a Jones Lang or Marcus and Millichap or an ARE or, you know, a Holiday Finolio or any of the uh, brokerage houses, we don't even attempt to buy it today. There is just so much competition. We're not that buyer. We're not going to be the last in. So we find and source these deals directly. Uh, and that comes with a strong acquisitions group. We have in-house due diligence, in-house underwriting. We have in-house asset management, in-house property management. We have uh, in-house legal and accounting. Uh, We have uh, reef development services and reef construction services. So as a result of being vertically integrated and controlling all aspects of the transaction, we're going to hire best in class and the best people that are suited for each of those disciplines. What is Agent Ignite? Are you wondering how you can make more money and create a competitive advantage for yourself and your clients in this ever competitive real estate industry? Agent Ignite is the key to furthering your knowledge, establishing your expertise, and positioning yourself as a go-to expert. They deliver new and relevant knowledge so you can expand your clientele, close more deals, and ultimately increase income. Each month features a new guest speaker who will deliver on what is most relevant for your business. As a member of DMAR's Market Trends Committee, an avid champion for building wealth through real estate, and a self-proclaimed data geek, Nicole will share market trends and commentary that will add value to you and your clients. Staying up to date on industry statistics coupled with niche topics delivered by industry experts will help you motivate your buyers and sellers and make you more money. Sign up for the next Agent Ignite session at theruthteam.com slash events. Yeah, and I would imagine, you know, you can move much, <laughs> just with much more efficiency, right? When you have all of those things in-house. I, I mean, I can just see that from us working with our attorney to the attorney you have to work with the seller to the, you know, making, uh, you know, whether it's through due diligence, whatever it may be, and getting all the contracts back and forth. Hey, you, you got it all right there in-house. So uh, you can make things move uh, efficiently and quickly. You're 100% right. Things happen in real time here. Yeah. I can, you know, walk down the hall or, or walk to the second floor and, you know, get with our legal department whenever there's an issue. I can, you know, go up to the fourth floor and, and visit with our property management or on the third floor asset management or whatever the case is. And really, we're able to get real time decisions made and accurate information from each of the different disciplines. We uh, rely heavily on, you know, technology and everybody is communicating uh, within 
uh, the office real time. So when issues arise, which inevitably they will, we have solutions and answers to solve those problems very, very, very quickly. When did you decide to vertically integrate? I know things like property management, oftentimes people will say, well, you can't make any money in property management until you have at least 10,000 units. Or, uh, you know, maybe you speak to that, but also, you know, even bringing things like, uh, you know, in-house counsel uh, as well. Well, again, I think it comes for, it helps us execute not only more efficiently, but better. I think that we deliver better results to our investors as a result of controlling all aspects of that uh, particular transaction. We're not relying on you know third parties. Uh, it's, it's, it's all done in-house. And I think that we get better service, obviously, you know that way. And I think that translates to better yields and lower risk to you know, where it matters, which is the equity investors. You know, would you speak to? Uh, I, I couldn't uh, on that note though. I couldn't agree more. I mean, it just it it helps the communication piece drastically, right? You don't have to wait on other people. You can move things along. You're not getting things approved. Uh, you can just make things happen. And I think it affects your bottom line. Even if you're not. Even if the PM is, is you know that business is not extremely lucrative, man, it's helping you be more lucrative. Uh, you know, in your in your real estate business or the performance of that project. Uh, what about uh, just challenges maybe you all faced as a business during the pandemic uh, and just how you all managed and navigated those, you know, over the last years, two years? So our thesis was always that the areas in which we focus are recession resilient. We had a great test with COVID and the pandemic. And, uh, you know, our thesis held true. In fact, uh, 2021 on our beachfront hospitality platform. That was the biggest year we had ever had in terms of revenue, ADR, average daily rent, occupancy, and consequently, rep bar was higher than it had ever been. Same thing is true with our apartment portfolio. And I think that that goes back to strong asset management, strong property management, and being ahead of it and communicating. There's nothing more important than communicating. And we do that with our guests, with our tenants, and with our investors. And we really did not miss a beat throughout COVID. In fact, our our offices, we did close and work from home about 30 days in March of 20 or whenever it started. But we've been open and operating since. In fact, uh, you know, in, in the office, people, you know, show up in the morning, we have food brought in. So there's people interacting all day long and and, uh, really not leaving. So I think that that helps us in uh, be able to transact uh, more efficiently and better. Yeah, uh, that's incredible. Uh, uh, What about uh, just any challenges with, uh, you know, scaling, you know, I mean, you're from a hundred million to, to the three and a half uh, a billion. Uh, What, what are some, just some challenges maybe you face with scaling a business and company like that? Well, you know, having good systems in place, any new hires will go through Reef Academy. And it's a training process. And we have detailed manuals that are living, breathing documents that, you know, actually change weekly as better ways uh, are figured out of doing something or more efficiently. And so everybody is really trained and trained up. We like hiring uh, highly motivated young people and train them the reef way. We do hire some real estate veterans, but you know they oftentimes have to retrain them. And so having the consistency within each of the departments within reef that follows a manual has really helped us scale uh, effectively. Yeah, uh, having the processes documented, uh, right? I like how you said. Uh, there, are, it's a living document. So uh, that tells me, like, we're is we're constantly improving it. I assume we are, yes, and we're constantly relying on, you know, new technology. You know, we for asset management and you know monitoring the growth and, and within Reef, we have uh, software engineers on staff that are writing our own programs. You know, consistent with the way we want to see things done. And, you know, we've bought all the software that's, you know, out there in the market and studied it and learned the best of each of the different systems to create our own. And I think that that, too, has helped us and certainly helps us in the hiring and the consistency with the level 
of professionalism we like from our employees. If you had to look back, you know, over the last number of years, so let's say, you know, 10 years, you know, since uh, the, this, the big turn sounds like a, of growth happened, you know, five, six years ago, you know, what would you have done differently, you know, or, or is there anything? You know, I think that we have tried many different areas of commercial real estate and, you know, have fine tuned today what we do. And to me, it was all an evolution. You know, even over that 35 years, you know, it's, it's, it's learning and figuring out how to do something better than everybody else is doing. How do we create outsized yields without increasing the risk to our investors? And as I said, it's an evolution. And I think that, you know, over the last 10 years, it's evolved to where we are today and have really the last five years where we've experienced all that growth, focused all our efforts on the workforce housing, middle America, and, you know, drive to leisure hospitality. And I think that's key, drive to leisure and middle America hospitality and middle America multifamily. You know, that said, like, do you have any predictions, Skip, for the just the real estate market the next six to 12 months? I think it, um, I think it's extremely heated today. And I think that uh, with inflation, you're, we're going to see some interest rate increases in the multifamily space where we primarily focus the rental rate growth because of the demand exceeding the supply is outpacing, you know, the, what we would anticipate high, you know, when we anticipate higher rental rates. And as a result of that, in the low cap rates that we're seeing from buyers in the market, it's likely that we're going to end up being net sellers in 2022 versus net buyers. First year ever will be net sellers. In other words, we're not going to pay the prices to buy new assets that people are paying us for our assets. So we're really gearing up more on the ground up development side and taking advantage of these, uh, you know, prices that we're seeing in the market where, you know, buyers for the first time in a long time are paying uh, well in excess of 100% of, you know, well, you know, one and a half to two times construction costs. Yeah, and no. not going to buy existing assets that you know that we know we can develop a lot less. Yeah, it's just great to get your insight on that. I think it's I've heard that a few times from people on just what's happening right now. What about anything that I'll tell you? What I'll go ahead and ask you: any daily habits that you have kept that have helped you uh, just to achieve this level of success? You know, I think that we, you know, I, I try to keep an open mind and, and and realize that we're not all things to everybody in the commercial real estate arena. Let's focus on what we've learned. Let's not be afraid to make mistakes. Let's learn from those mistakes. And let's continue to learn every day because it is a fluid industry. And, you know, uh, construction costs come, go up. You've got to have, you know, professionals in place that can move quickly and take advantage of disconnects as they present themselves. And I think that we do do that. We, we stay open-minded and no, we're not perfect. <laughs> What's next for a reef? Like, what, is there a, a, another goal or let's say another five years from now? Or what are you all shooting towards? Well, I think that uh, we do have some very lofty goals. I'd like us to hit the five billion in AUM by the end of this year. That's going to be quite the challenge. Uh, that means that we'd have another year like we did in 2021, transacting over 1.5 billion in, in total deals. Though I think that we'll end up being net sellers on the multifamily side. We are aggressively uh, pursuing ground up developments and additional beachfront hospitality assets to redevelop. And I think that our reef communities is going to explode, meaning uh, the single family uh, residential uh, area of the company. And that, as I said earlier, includes uh, BTR, build to rent. I think we'll see that being a big push for us over the next two to three years. What If you had to pick one thing that's contributed to your success, what would that be? Persistence. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I keep going back to uh, constantly learning and staying with it. It's persistence. It's learning. It's uh, continually educating uh, yourself and figuring out, you know, who's doing things well and where people make mistakes and continuing to to grow. 
Is there a way you like to educate yourself or that's worked the best for you? It's lots of meetings with lots of peers, competitors, and constantly fine-tuning our market knowledge. As I said earlier, we're in 15 states, and we will spend a lot of time in the cities in which we transact to really understand the pulse of the city, how it's growing, why it's growing, and analyzing what you know, what's happened in the past and what's happening now and what we foresee happening, you know, 12, 24, 36 months from now. And how do you like to give back? Well, we give back in many ways. We do have a philanthropic part of Reef Holdings. We do this this past year, we've done, we've sponsored a couple of golf tournaments and we've done a number of church uh, area uh, donations and uh, Christmas giving. We also like to give back in uh, educating folks in what we do and what we found in real estate and helping them make decisions on uh, you know, where they might uh, be best suited for their careers. Awesome. Kip, it's been a pleasure to meet you and have you on the show. Uh, you know, very few guests, you know, have have numerous billion, you know, in assets under management. And so it's incredible just to, uh, to talk through that a little bit, right. And even encourage myself and the listeners uh, to, to shoot for a vision like that and that it is possible uh, as well. So grateful to have you. Uh, how can the listeners learn more about Reef and yourself? We love for uh, people just to you know, call us or go to our website. And, you know, I think my cell phone's published, and I'll take any call <laughs> pretty much 24-7. Uh, you know, check out uh, www.reef.com. You know, we're on social media as well. We're uh, Come to our offices in Dallas. You don't need an appointment. Just show up. I'd recommend people show up during lunch because we usually have pretty good lunches catered in, and we'll, we'll sit down and uh, talk to you. Thank you for being a loyal listener of the show. Please subscribe and share it with your friends. We want to help you become the passive investor you've always wanted to become, but also the operator you've always wanted to become. We want to be the number one resource for your real estate investing journey. But go to lifebridgecapital.com where you can start investing in real estate today.